In today's video, we are going to build end-to-end -end LLM project where we are going to use all these technologies. Atlic Tees is a store that sells t-shirts. Their data is stored in a MySQL database. We will build a tool similar to ChatGPT where you can ask a question in natural human language. It will convert that question into SQL query and execute it on our database. You will get a feeling as if you are talking to a database in a plain English language. It's gonna be a very interesting project. Let us discuss project requirements. Our Atlic Tees t-shirt store sells four brands mainly, Van Hussein, Levis, Nike and Adidas. And the MySQL database has first table which is called t-shirts where we maintain the inventory count. So basically Levis black color small size t-shirt have 15 uh, stock quantity left. Okay, so 15, 64, these are the stock quantities. And this price is price per unit. So one Levis black small size t-shirt will cost you $19. The second table I have is discounts. So for example, t-shirt ID one, which is Levis black small t-shirt has 10% discount. In real life, the database will have so many different tables. To make things simple for learning, I'm just going to use two tables. The t-shirt store manager is Tony Sarma. Whenever he has questions related to stock quantity, discounts and so on, he uses a software which is built on top of this MySQL database. If you look at retail domain overall, they will have these softwares where you can use various UI options on the software to get answers of your questions. And Tony is fine using this software, but many times what happens is he has custom questions, little complex questions, and the software can't figure it out. So then he will have to download the data in Excel, do certain things manually. Whenever he's busy, he goes to Loki Lal, who is a data analyst working for this company. And Loki knows SQL. So let's say if Tony asks this question that how many white color Nike t-shirts do we have in stock? And he will just simply run the SQL query on that database and get the answer back to Tony Sharma. But Loki is busy as well. He's busy building Power BI dashboards and he doesn't have uh, too much time for these ad hoc queries. Also, Loki is the only data analyst working for this company and Tony sometimes have issues where, you know, Loki is out on leave and he's not available. And then he has to do all this work manually because Tony himself doesn't know SQL. So then he goes to a data scientist who is working for the same company and you might guess what is the name of that data scientist. Well, Peter Pandey, who looks somewhat like me and he says, Hey, Peter, buddy, we are living in chat GPT era, LLM, Langchain, all these cool frameworks have come up. Why don't you build a tool similar to chat GPT where I can ask a question in a human language and it somehow converts that to a SQL query, executes it on a database and gets me the answer that the answer is 3165. Peter likes this thought and he agrees to build this particular tool. So let's look at the technical architecture of this tool. Whenever you have a question, you need to convert that to a SQL query using some LLM. Now we are going to use Google Palm here, which will do this conversion. And we will use Google Palm from Langchain framework. Within Langchain framework, you can use Google Palm and other type of LLMs. We will use a SQL database chain class within Langchain framework. This will work okay for simple queries, but as the queries get little complex, out of the box, Google Palm model will fail sometimes. It will give errors and we need to do some special handling. We will use a concept of few short learning here. Few short learning means you need to prepare the training data set where you have a sample question and a corresponding SQL query. Here you will list down all those queries where out of the box Google model is failing. And you can prepare these queries with the help of your data analyst, Mr. Loki Lal. And you prepare this data set. It is called few short learning because you don't need to prepare like thousand samples. You know, you can have some few samples here and then you will convert this training data set into embedding vectors. If you don't have any idea on what is word embedding, sentence embedding, go to YouTube, search for code basics embedding or code basics word embedding. You will find a couple of videos where I have provided a very simple intuitive explanation. For these embeddings, we will use hugging face library. Once embeddings are created, we will store them into a vector database. When you think about vector database, there are a couple of options that you have pine cone, 
Milverse, ChromaDB, Face, etc. We are going to use ChromaDB. It is open source and it will work perfectly okay for our project. Once the vector database is ready, we will pair it up with a Google Palm LLM. We'll use few short prompt template to create the SQL database chain. And the last piece will be building a UI in Streamlit. We will write just few lines of code, five or six lines of code, and our UI will be ready. To continue further on this project, obviously you need to have LangChain basics clear, for which I have this particular video where I have covered all the basics in this one single video. So make sure uh, you have either watched it or you already know the LangChain fundamentals, so just the basics. You also need to know what is vector database. In this six minute video, I have given a very simple explanation of what is vector database. So if you have not seen it, please uh, see that. Now let's do a review of Google Palm. There are three popular options uh, when you talk about building LLM application. OpenAI's GPT-4 model, which is best in the market, but it is paid. The other two unpaid are Meta's Llama and Google Palm. I could have used Meta's Llama for this project, but you have to download that Llama model locally or less in your Google Collab. And it is very heavy, like sometimes it's the, the size is in gigabytes and it's kind of a little bit hard to set up. Whereas Google's Palm is very easy to set up. It works similar to OpenAI API where you just make a query to their Google server. And the beautiful thing here is it is all free, okay? So we are going to use that. As a next step, we are going to set up API key for Google Palm. I have opened makersuit.google.com website where you can log in using your Google account. You need to go to get API key and you can create API key in your existing Google Cloud project. And if you don't have that, just click on create API key in a new project. So here I will use just any project and create an API key. Now this API key is short of like a password, so make sure you don't share it with others. I'm showing you this API key right now, but I'm gonna delete it after I use it in my project. So I'll copy it, save it at a safe place so that I can use it later on in my code. Talking about Maker Suit, it gives you a test pad where you can try different prompts. For example, text prompt, Let, let's go here. And here you can write different prompts and it will use this text bison model. Google Palm is the architecture, but the specific model that it is using is text bison. The creativity parameter means if it is more closer to one, then it will be more creative. If, if it is more closer to zero, it will be less creative. You can try some sample prompts, for example, summarize a paragraph. And when you run it, it will summarize the uh, paragraph. You can try it poem writing or write your own custom prompt. Behind the scene, it is using the same API that we will be using in our project. Therefore, if you want to quickly test your API, this test pad allows you to do that very easily. You can play with different prompts, but as far as API key is concerned, we are all set now. We will set up our MySQL database now. I have launched MySQL Workbench by going here and typing MySQL Workbench. If you're not aware about MySQL, don't worry. You can go to YouTube, type code basic SQL tutorial. I have this one and a half uh, hour tutorial where I have given a complete idea for any beginner. Uh, so you can follow that and learn MySQL easily. This tool is by the way free. You can download it easily by going to Google, searching for MySQL Workbench. I will open this local instance. And if you check video description below, I have given you all the code files. This will have a database directory. You can go here and drag and drop this SQL file here. This file is taking care of creating database and tables within it. You can click on this execute icon and it will create the tables and data within it. When you click on this refresh icon, that's when you will see Atlic T-shirt database. You can right click on it and set it as a default data set if you have not set it like that before. So it just says set as a default schema and you will see that this font will convert into bold. Now table wise, we have first table, which is t-shirts. If you click on this third icon, you will see some sample record. For example, t-shirt ID one is Van who sends a red color t-shirt in small size. Price of one t-shirt is $15. We have total 70 t-shirts available in our store. That's a stock quantity. If you talk about discounts, 
Teacher ID 1, which is the same Van Huysen red color t-shirt, has 10% discount. What it means is the $15 is the original price, 10% of 15 is 1.5. So when I sell this one t-shirt, I'm going to give $1.5 discount to a customer. So they'll get it for $13.5. These records, by the way, will be different when you execute this SQL script because we are using some random numbers here. So don't worry if you don't see the same exit numbers in your case, they are likely going to be different. All right, our database is set up. Now let's start coding in our Jupyter Notebook. I ran Python hyphen M notebook to launch my Jupyter Notebook. And here I have created a new Python notebook. I'm going to import Google Palm model from langchain.llms, okay? Now you can use uh, OpenAI, all kind of models. Google Palm is free. So let's create a, an object for this LLM. And here I'm going to pass Google API key, which will be stored in a variable called API key. And I will initialize that variable here and add my specific key here. Folks, as I said before, Please use your key. I'm going to delete my key later on. So I have code will not work if you use my key. Once LLM object is created, you can ask some sample prompt. For example, write a poem on my love for dosa. Dosa is a South Indian food. I love that. And you can, you know, print a poem on that. And you see it is working good now folks before you run this code make sure all your libraries are installed so you can run this command pip install hyphen r with requirement.txt file and if you look at the requirement.txt file it has all these requirements langchain chroma db all of that so i'm assuming you have installed all of that all right now let's create a an sql database object and for that you can import this particular class and when you create SQL database object, you will say from URI. Okay. And here you are going to pass a URI or URI is like URL. It specifies what is your database, what is a host, username, password, and so on. So we'll store all this information in different variables. My database is running locally. Therefore, localhost username password is root and at lick underscore t-shirt is a database name see you see it here okay now the way uri is formed is using this syntax i'll just copy paste to save time on recording you don't need to remember all these things anyway so this is the syntax of it all right and then the second parameter is sample rows in table and, and i'll show you what this uh, number three means so here, the result that I got, I will store it in this variable called db. And this will have a property called dbinfo, which we can print. When I do this, uh, I will get a confirmation that I'm able to connect to my SQL database from my Jupyter Notebook and see, it is able to pull all this information, which means my Jupyter Notebook is now connected to my database. Now we are ready to create our SQL database chain. Okay. So in Langchain, there are all kinds of chains like SQL database chain. Um, and for different type of use cases, you will have these different chains. So this SQL database chain, if you notice is imported from Langchain experimental module. Now, if you are seeing this video in the future, it is possible. You can import it directly from a LinkedIn module, but as of right now, it is part of the experimental module. In the future, if they make it available, just, just remove this thing, you know, use your common sense and you should be able to run it. Now let's create the chain object. Okay. And this chain object will take first parameter will be LLM that we created. Second one is the DB object. See this particular DB object. And then you can store this into db chain. And now you can run a simple query. 
before i do that i will pass one more parameter verbose true so that i can see the sql query that it is generating and i can see some internal details the first question i am asking is this okay let me just copy paste here how many nike white color extra small size t-shirts do i have and let's store it in this uns variable control enter okay this is happening because here i need to use from llm see it pulled a right answer it is saying 59 and if you look at this query the query that it generated if you run it it, it is actually the right query that it generated okay so here uh, let me see so here i can run that query See, 59. If you just look at uh, Nike t-shirts overall, uh, or let's say, let me just do star here. Only Nike t-shirts. See, Nike t-shirts are this. If you look at Nike white t-shirts, this much. And in that, extra small size t-shirt quantity is 59. And the answer that it is giving is 59. If you do QNS1, see it is giving 59. By the way, it is giving a dictionary as an output. If you want to get directly 59, here you can use run. So when you do that, QNS will have the direct answer. Now there are a couple of observations I have. LLM is actually doing pretty good job because I said extra small size and it is smart enough to figure out that extra small means excess. And it is able to map that to size column. When I say white color, W is small, but it is able to map it to capital W because it looked into our database and figured that our color starts with a capital letter. So you see, this is the power of LLM. Now, this was relatively simple query. Let me try a different query. And the query is, what is the price of the inventory for all my small size t-shirts? Now, while it executes this, let me run that code here. So we want to get all small size t-shirt, okay? So here I will say where small size, okay? Let me get all small size t-shirts. These are all small size t-shirt. And what is the total price? Total price will be price into stock quantity. So here I need to run sum. I will say sum price into quantity okay and when i run that it is actually stock quantity so when i run that this is the price i get now let's see what we got in our notebook 215 wrong answer folks so why did that happen let's just think about it so here the problem is it said sum of price. It did not say sum of price into stock quantity. It forgot to multiply it by quantity. If you think a little bit, you will actually find an obvious reason. LLM is thinking that whatever t-shirts I have, so let me show you these t-shirts. It is thinking that the price column is for all the t-shirts. So for Levy white color small size t-shirts, I have total 51 t-shirts available and the price of total, total price of all 51 t-shirts is 13. That is what LLM is thinking because the column name is not price per unit. It says price. So price could be total price or it could be price per unit. It is assuming it is the total price. And if this was a total price, then the answer that LLM gave would be correct. But in real life, database column names are not going to be perfect. So this is representing a real life scenario. Okay. So the conclusion that we get is LLMs will make mistake and we need to tell it somehow that the price column is price per unit. It is not the total price. We can do this using few short learning. We will do that after some time. Let me run a few more queries, okay? And meanwhile, 
I will store the right QNS answer, okay? And the way you can do that is you can actually run the explicit query. So the explicit query that we have is this, okay? So I'm going to run that query here. So in db chain dot run, you can actually run the explicit query and we got this right answer, which is stored in my QNS2. All right, so far it is looking good. Now I will run the third query, which will be a little bit complex. So I'm saying, if I sell all my Levi's t-shirt today with discounts, how much revenue my store will generate? Now, when you want to apply discounts, you need to do some kind of join, okay? So you have all the Levy t-shirts, okay? So these are all the Levy t-shirts that you have. You need to multiply price by stock quantity, and then you need to sum all of this, you will get total revenue. Then you need to go to discount table and figure out on Levy's t-shirts, how much discount you have. For example, one of the t-shirt ID for Levy is three. Levy white extra small is three. And for three, we have 20% discount. So on this price of so 44 into 94, you need to apply 20% discount in that. So let's see if LLM can handle this kind of complex case. No, so it failed. It failed because in the query, now you see all these columns, discount dot start date, discount dot end date. Usually whenever you have discount, you will have start date and end date column because discounts can't run forever, right? There will be start date and end date. But in our database, if you look at discount table, we don't have start and end date. So LLM is using its general knowledge and it is assuming that there will be start date and end date in our table. We need to tell it that, hey buddy, don't use your brain, okay? Look at the table and if you find a column then only use it here start date doesn't exist how come you just use it you know so we need to tell that and again we will do that using few short learning after some time for now let me run that query uh, explicitly okay so here this is the query uh, to get the answer and we'll run it and by the way this is not a mysql tutorial so i'm not going into detail uh, but let me just just very quickly explain how this thing works. So here, if you look at this particular query, it has this part is a sub query. And if you execute this query, it will pull all Levi's t-shirt, it will multiply price by quantity, and it will give you that. So for t-shirt ID 17, if you sell all the t-shirt, you will get this much revenue. For 64, you'll get this much. You can sum them up to get a total revenue. And then you need to uh, make a join of this table with discounts table C. This query, by the way, the result is stored in table called A and you are doing a left join with discount table. And then you are applying the discount here. So if you execute this, this is actually the answer. Okay, 24, 3, 6, 7. And if you look at this, 24, 3, 6, 7 is the answer we got, which we have stored in this QNS3 variable. Similarly, let me run a uh, few more queries. So this is, if I sell all Levis t-shirts, you know, how much revenue will I generate? I will generate this much. And another question I have is, how many white color Levis t-shirts I have? Now, let's go and figure that out. So you want to know how many white color Levi's t-shirts. So when you say total Levi's t-shirts, it is this much and white color, right? So you will say and color is equal to white. Okay. This much. So total uh, white color Levi's t-shirts are 94 plus 51 plus 29, 15 and 95. But in our code, what's happening is, see 94, 15, 1, it, it pulled all that numbers, but it did not sum it up. So if you look at the answer, the answer is 94. Why did that? 
because it is not able to figure out that it needs to do sum here okay so the right query here is sum of stock quantity so that will be 284 that's the right answer again it failed so what 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 do we do now well we run the query explicitly so that later on i can use it in my few short learning okay so qns5 query i will just copy paste whatever i wrote in my SQL workbench and qns5 now is 284 so now we have all these answers and we have all these queries uh, let's try few short learning uh, so that our llm can improve uh, on the errors that it is making in few short learning the first thing we need to do is provide the question and query pairs where llm was getting confused once we have those training example the second step would be to convert it into embeddings and we are going to use hugging face for that so let's go to a notebook and start putting together those few short examples in a simple python list and each of these examples would be a dictionary and dictionary will have one element which will be uh, your question okay so let's say my question is this and then the sql query corresponding to that question would be this so we previously ran all this query so i'm just copy pasting just to save time other than these two we need to have sql result and answer as a parameter now why do we need this well just hold on we will uh, see this later this is the syntax that the default langchain sql prompt is using therefore we are using the same syntax I i'll show you a little later and this first answer if you remember we stored that into qns1 okay so qns1 is nothing but it is this 59 okay so that's what we are having so we put we take all these samples and put them into this single array and once we have this thing ready the second thing is we use hugging face for generating embedding and for that we'll use uh we'll import the hugging face embedding class and we are going to use this particular embedding now folks there are so many different ways to generate these embeddings i tried this particular embedding it was working fine so that's what why i'm using this you can even try open ai embedding if you are ready to pay the price and there are instructor embedding uh, in the other project that we did for ad tech domain we used instructor embedding so you can use whatever embedding can serve your need and this will be stored in this particular variable and let me just you know we can say embed query what embedding will do is you can type any query and it will generate an embedding which is which is just an array okay so let me save it here and the example you can use is okay let's say we generate embedding for this particular sentence so this e will be a list of size 384 and when you look at these numbers they don't actually make sense but they capture the meaning of this particular sentence in a right way so that if someone types uh, a different query i mean the, the query is like similar to this but the words are different even then the embedding of that embed and embedding of this query will be similar in terms of cosine similarity uh, of course so i'm going to uh, remove this and i'm going to now uh, create a vector database and for that we need to create a blob of all these sentences okay so let's say i have this sentence what i need to do is i need to remove all these keys because they are really not needed okay so i remove all these keys and then i kind of merge these strings together so see i will merge all these strings together and i will generate a single big string with some space in between like this and this qns whatever that answer i think it was 51 
59 whatever right so i want to generate this kind of blob and this text block i will vectorize and store it in my database now to do that i can use list comprehension i can say uh, for example in few shots so th this is the array right like few shots this is the array i can say um example dot values so i'm interested only in the values these values not the keys so when i do that uh, i will get this kind of uh, a list and each of these elements are dict values i want to generate a string out of it and how do you generate a string from a list well if you know python you can do join of this and i will say to vectorizes this see it generated this uh, list and if you look at the first element it is simply taking all these four values and and making one one big string out of it okay now let's create a vector database for which we are going to import chroma chroma is the vector database that we are using in this project and then from chroma we can say from text where you supply the text okay the, the array of text and the second parameter is embedding okay so embedding is equal to embeddings and the last parameter is the metadata which is our few shots so the entire few short array that we have we are giving it to as a metadata you can go ahead and read the documentation but the essence of this statement is that this is how you generate a vector store so this vector store is this vector store it's already created and the job of vector store is to take an input question so let's say if i have an input question like this it will convert that into embedding and it will pull you the similar looking few short example so let's try that and uh, to see how that thing works so for that similarity matching, you need to import another class called semantic similarity example selector. And in that you will pass two parameters. So first, first thing is obviously you need a vector store. So you will say vector store is equal to vector store and then K is equal to two, which means pull me two similar example. K can be one, two, three. I mean, if you want three examples, just say three. This I have stored in example selector variable and you can say select examples. Okay. So you can give is a, a sentence. Okay. So you can give a sentence like this here and you can say, can you pull me similar looking things from this and see the similar looking question is how many t-shirt do we have left? So just read these two statements. Okay. This and this, they look similar. And the second best match is this. This is not exactly matching, but this is like a second best match that you can get. Okay. So this mechanism that you give input sentence to vector database and you can pull similar looking queries. See, if you can pull similar looking queries, then my LLM can look into those. And from those queries, it can learn and it can produce a good result. All right. Now, if you remember, we already discussed giving a custom prompt to our LLM because our LLM is making mistakes such as discount table doesn't have a start date. It is still using start date in my MySQL query. So I want to have a custom MySQL prompt saying that only use database table columns right do not just make things up so i want to give some instructions though so that it doesn't make a mistake now i have to write that sql prompt on my own but the good news is that langchain already provides this prompt to you you can import that prompt by doing this and if you print that prompt let's see how it looks see you are my SQL expert, given the question, create MySQL query first, never query for all columns. I don't want to say select star. I want to say select X, Y specific columns. You must query only the columns that are needed to answer. 
pay attention to use only the columns that you see in the tables below. See, this is important. We are saying we are going to give you the table info and only use see table info is this folks. This table info that you printed use the columns only from these tables. Okay, that's what we are saying. Also, if you're talking about any date, uh, use current date for the today. So we are giving a lot of useful instructions. Uh, and then we are forming a query. Okay, if you look at the prefix, so let me print that one also, I think suffix. So suffix is like this. Okay, so eventually what we'll do is see, we'll take our prefix. So prefix is this, we'll take our suffix, suffix is this, and our actual query will come in between. So here, if you look at our prefix, see, prefix has this, this format question, SQL query, SQL result answer. And that is the format we have used here. See, look at these four elements. That's exactly the format that we are using. So now let's think about the query, the, the query in the middle. Okay. What will go in the middle for this? We need to import a prompt template. Okay. And then that prompt template folks, just to save again time, I'm just copy pasting things. It will have question, SQL query, SQL result answer, and the template will be something like this. Okay. So what happens is actually when you actually type in a query, um, this, this, this query will have that format. Okay. Question will go here. The actual question that you're generating the the SQL query uh, and so on. Okay. It's, it's, I think intuitive. If you've seen my previous video, you will, you will get some idea. Now comes the time to create our few short prompt template. Okay. And in this few short prompt template, we will pass a bunch of parameters. The first one is obviously the example selector that we have created. See, this is the example selector. So if you do this, you will establish the association between your LLM vector database. You will say, Hey, LLM, if you're confused, look into this vector database. Okay. So that is what we are doing here. The second one is the example prompt that we have created. And then the next two are the prefix and suffix. So now using these three, it will generate this kind of single prompt that you can pass to your Google Palm LLM. And the last parameter is the input variable. Okay. So in the input variable, you'll see things like table info. So table info is this, this is the table info. Okay. And if you look at our query, see that is the table info. So here actually, wherever you see this, this bracket here, you will actually put that table info. Okay. So you will put all of this. So your actual prompt will be a little bigger. You will say this, see, now you're saying that, um, use the table info. So here you, I think you said somewhere, right? Info, info. Okay. See, pay attention to use only the column names you can see in the tables below. So which tables see only use following tables, this, so this type of big prompt will be formed when you write this particular, this particular few short prompt template, we are going to save it in a variable here. Okay. And then we are creating the same chain. See, we created this, this, this chain before. Okay. If you, if you look at this code, remember we created this object. So it's exactly same. Okay. We are doing that here, but now we need to add one more parameter, which is prompt. This is the only additional thing we are passing so that whenever it is confused, it uses that new information. And now let's give those queries, which were failing. So how many white color Levis t-shirts we have? Okay. If you remember, it was not using some before now it is using some. So see it, it worked. Second query is how much is the price of the inventory for all small size t-shirts? And previously it was not multiplying it with uh, this quantity. So let me just show you this one. So if you look at the previous query, see, it was saying 215 because it was not multiplying it with the stock quantity. Now 
it is doing that see it is producing the right answer and it's not like see you can give a little similar query so i will say how much is the price of all the extra small size t-shirts this is a little different and it will work uh, it will see it will say size is excess that way so let's try the most difficult ones one that we had uh, which was that levy's so instead of levy's i'm saying nike's and i'm saying after discount how much revenue will it generate see it worked it said brand is nike this is this you can you can change this a little bit you know when you change the language it is still doing that semantic search you know when we when we did this semantic uh, similarity example selector it is doing semantic search therefore you are not passing the exact query which you passed in your uh, few shot you can pass little different uh, queries as well so folks try different queries and uh, it is possible that for some queries it may not work in that case you will take that query and the right sql query and then you will add it to your few shot example right now i have five but if you want to make all kind of queries work you might have 40 or 50 different type of few short examples okay so wherever it is failing take a question take a right sql query and add it to few short example and after that it will not make a mistake all right we are all set to put all these things together and write a streamlit ui which you will see is only few line of code so we are almost there folks please stay on you have come so far i know it requires a lot of patience uh, but learning llm is amazing for your career now we will write the code for our project i have created atlic t's project folder here and here you will find two files requirement txt and t-shirt sales jupyter notebook from here i am going to launch pycharm community edition which is a free editor for python and there you can open that particular folder so i will go here and in the c code directory i will open atlic t's project folder like that and we will not create any virtual environment so i'll just say cancel so there is no virtual environment and let me pull uh, this window right here the first file we are going to create is main.py okay and in this file we are going to create our llm object so now i will copy paste the code from our jupyter jupyter notebook to here we use jupyter notebook for all our experimentation and this is what data scientists do in uh, when they are working for companies they will do some experimentation in the notebook and when they feel the code is ready they will try to productionize it and they will move it to a proper python file structure or a project structure so let's import all those uh, libraries so i'm just going to copy paste all the libraries that we imported in our jupyter notebook you can configure your python here and the first thing if you remember we were doing was creating a google palm object okay so here i'm creating google palm object and we need to give google api key now in production code you don't hard code your key here the standard practice is to create environment file so dot env and you will keep your key here okay so this is the key i have kept here and how do i get this key from here to main.py well we use this special python module called dot environment from there we will import this method dot load this one and when you execute this method it will specifically look for dot env file and it will read the content and it will set this as an environment variable so this key will be environment variable and this will be the value okay so after this line it has set the environment variable now how do i get the value of that environment well you need os module so you will say os dot environment and in that the variable that we want is this particular thing okay 
and temperature is 0 0.1 I, I will not keep creativity very high otherwise it will start bluffing okay and once LLM object is created the next one is obviously the DB object and the third one is uh, our embedding okay and what I'm thinking is I will create uh, a function which will encapsulate all this code so let me put all this thing in a function here all right and here I'm going to copy paste all those things so if you remember we had embeddings we had um, our vector database and we have few shots so few shot was an array and I would like to put that array in a separate file so I will call it few shots and this file will contain all of this now answer I have hard-coded folks because here we are giving this as an example to our LLM. let see this is how this is the format of your answer the exit answer it will get by executing this query so so that, that's something you need to keep in mind and you can import that thing here you can say from few shots import few shots okay so it will not give an error now after example selector i just copy paste all the code so you're creating a same exact same sql database chain and returning it here and we will create a main fun python function we'll say if it is main this is how you create a main function in python by the way and you will get this chain and then you will run this chain okay you will say whatever is your query and you will put in the result okay so what is my query well, let's just give some sample query to test when you're doing this type of coding it makes sense that you write some code and then test it you write some code and test it so here i will just run this and see it gives the answer and if you look at the query the query seems to be right you can try different queries here uh, but let's say this is working now we are ready to write our streamlit code for streamlit i would like to keep the ui code in main.py and i would move all the langchain code in a separate file i'll call it uh, langchain helper maybe and let me just control a x control v you know control c control v is the most powerful weapon for all programmers and then here i will import that method now let's do streamlit coding you will say import streamlit as st st dot title what is my title well my title is this and you'll have input box right so text input box you will type a question here and that question you will get here and then if question meaning if someone types a question and they hit enter the code flow will come here first let's uh, taste this uh, bare skeleton so here in the terminal you can run streamlet run main.py and it will launch the ui in a browser so see my ui looks good when i type a question hit enter it will take that question in this question variable and the flow will come here so here what we need to do here we need to obviously first get a chain and then we'll say chain dot run this is my question and you get the answer and then st dot header so you will put another element on the ui and you will say st dot write your answer the good thing about streamlit is that you don't have to rerun it from here you can go here and just click on rerun now let's ask those questions so i will hit enter here see hooray 3083 let's ask a different question and by the way if you want to see a corresponding query since we have set verbose parameter to be true 
let's say you get 59 answer you're not sure if it's right or wrong you can either go to mysql run the query or you can look at the query here see how many t-shirts do we have left for nike and excess and white see nike excess white sum of stock quantity this is perfect and then um yeah so folks you can ask uh, different questions and get your answers now this tool will be very useful to our store manager tony sarma because he will be able to ask questions directly and get answers on most of the questions once again folks check the video description below for all the code learning coding is like learning swimming if you don't practice this there is no point so don't watch my video as if you are watching netflix series sitting on your sofa you have to code okay you might have realized we have put a lot of effort in building uh, this project so if you like it please give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends who wants to learn llm thank you for watching any questions there is a comment box below